Hi everyone, let's look at the sharpness and vignetting of the Samyang 85F 1.4 on a full frame camera, the Nikon D700. Uh, you've got to remember this is a f1.4, which means it's a massive aperture and lets lots of light in, but it's likely to have terrible everything at 1.4. And um, also on a full frame, I'm expecting very strong vignetting around the corners. But you've got to remember that this is a sub 200 pound lens or 250 pound lens. The closest equivalent Nikon to this is the 1.4 is about 900 pounds or the F1.4G is about 1,250. So this is a thousand pounds cheaper than that. But what you always got to remember is it's manual focus. But here we're just looking at the sharpness, chromatic aberration, all that kind of stuff, and it's uh, vignetting that you get. So what I did is I did some kind of real, real world tests of this and I took a photo of this wall. A, a very boring, very uninteresting wall, but it's a good thing for me to be able to test the difference in the apertures. So this first one here is at f5.6. Now this lens stopped all the way down to 5.6 should be at its best performance. And all I can say is I am astonished by it. It looks fantastically sharp, no vignetting uh, and no chromatic aberration whatsoever. It looks great. All the way to the very corners, all the way down there, it looks great. Now that's at one to one resolution, I think. Yeah, that's at one to one. So that is as good as it's going to get. Um, and as you can see, the size, this is on a 27 inch Mac as well. So at 5.6, fantastic. Now, if we look at the next shot, this is at 2.8. So that's a full two stops because you normally go 2.8 to 4, then 4 to 5.6. So that's two stops, four times the shutter speed difference. And if we flick from one to the other, one to the other, I'm not seeing any difference straight away. It looks fantastic. Um, again, right in the centre, phenomenal sharpness, no chromatic aberration that I can see in this shot. And again, going down to the corners, let's say we put the corner just there. And again, brilliant. And if we go to the 5.6, and we bring that one right down to the corner as well, just for a little bit of an example. 5.6, 2.8, 5.6, Oh, there might be a tiny little bit of difference there, but honestly, I'm having to squint to see that. Now, next one is going to be at f1.4. Now, I'm expecting terrible vignetting, softness and everything. Let's have a look. So if we're going from 2.8, here we go. Okay, so there is a bit of vignetting. I'm seeing that. But it's not bad. It's it's actually very good. Um, if we've got 2.8, 1.4, 2. And we, again, remember that is another two stops because you normally go from 1.4 to two, and then from two to 2.8, and that's that's your two stops. So again, four times the shutter speed difference. So we're going to three thousandth of a second instead of seven hundred fiftieth of a second. Um, and uh, yeah, so. The edges have got a little bit darker, but the center has got a little bit brighter it seems. And if we go right into the middle here, am I seeing any chromatic aberration there? Because like we've got white to black quite strong there and I'm not seeing any issues at all. Let's go right down to the corners. Now this should just really be blurry mush, but my goodness. Okay, there's there you can really see the biggest change in brightness from there to there. And there is a little bit of a softening going on, but Oh, again, this is a portrait lens that you're really going to be looking at the centre stuff. You're not going to be doing landscapes or anything with that and really looking at the corners. So this lens for under £250 for £1,000 cheaper than the Nikon equivalent <sighs> is astonishing. Um, here, Let's have a look, we'll look at this other example I did as well. So here, same, uh, just a different building, taking a shot of again. 5.6, fine. Then 2.8, fine. And then 2.0, oh, and 1.4. So it seems like by the time you get to f2, there's no vignetting. So f1.4 to 2, there's a difference. Like, let's say we look down at the corners here. Put the corner there. Uh, so that is at 1.4, and this is at f2. And this one is f2.8, so 1.4, 2, 
2.8. So 2.8 is maybe a little bit brighter again, 5.6, no difference. So definitely, by the time you're at 2.8, it's as good as it's going to get. Um, and again, just sharpness-wise, everything here, this image has got a lot of different details as well, but like you can see the res, you know, flowers, prams, everything. At the F2, is there more detail? Maybe there is. Is You lose a little bit in the, the kind of um, brightness that you're getting there, but whew, it's... That is good. That is good. Really good. Um, and then this last one here is looking at the kind of more of the shallowness of the depth of field, and we're, I was focused just on this kind of little bit of manky wood here. And look at the shallowness of the depth of field. So from this window, that's out of focus, and then out here, totally out of focus as well. So the area of focus is from about there to there, and that's at one point four. F. Uh, 2, so we've got it from a little bit further, and F2.8, I'd say from there to about there, and F4, yeah, we get a lot in focus there. So, again, let's say we go all the way back to F, I, I like that, I, I love, see the blur that you're getting, I think it just looks so kind of natural and lovely blur, I think it really looks good. Here about F4... And then here we're at f5.6. So at 5.6, you're almost getting detail uh, in the blurry bit there. And uh, going all the way back to f1.4. Oh, just beautiful mush. But I really like the vignette, that this, the natural lens vignette that you get. And you've got to remember, again, this is on a full frame camera um, where you usually get a lot of vignetting. Um, so yeah, very impressed. Now, the other thing, which I wasn't really going to add into this, but is the flaring. I was trying to get this lens to have some flare. I was shooting very close to the sun, and I really couldn't get my oh there's a bit there's a flare um or sunspot or wherever you want to call it uh, and it's slightly hexagonal because this was at f twenty two its smallest aperture um I was shooting at or f sixteen f sixteen is what I was doing at um and the thing is see when you shoot at such small apertures, you see spots of dust on your uh, sensor, so you've always got to be careful. Of that. See, F4, you don't see any dust. F16, uh, you see dust. F13, you see dust. And F. Whoa, blowout. But yeah, I couldn't. Oh, look, this is a slightly odd lens flare going on at the corner. But in general, that's it with the sun into the lens. Um, and the flare that I was getting in it, like, there, look, look at that shot. It is just. I'm not seeing any spots or anything. This is f2.8, sun in the shot. Let's see, wait, let's see if I do auto something. No. I was very impressed with how well this kind of fought against doing, um, uh, having kind of glare from the sun or anything like that. And its sharpness has astonished me, and its vignetting is beautiful, and its out of focus blur. I think is just lovely and just very natural looking. So anyway, that is the manual focus, which in my next photo I'll be telling you a little bit more what it's like on an actual photo shoot, not just doing some kind of lens test like this, um, where this kind of razor thin depth of field, how difficult is it to use in an actual, you know, proper portrait photo thing? How difficult is it? But yeah, this is a sub £250 f1.4 85mm lens from Samyang, also known as some different companies all over the world. Um, but this is the UMC, don't know what that is, the AS for a spherical lens, the IF, and it's the most up-to-date one, which uh, has aperture control in the camera as well, with the Nikon. Anyway, I know that. But yeah, from the lens test here, I am very happy with it. Very, very happy with it. There you go. Bye-bye.